embracing the cold. Oof, it was a cold night. I think it was like eight or seven degrees or something like that. Oh, just horrible. Anything below 14, 13 degrees Celsius. And I go, oh, not into panic mode. I just don't like it. But let me just show you who is bracing the cold now that I feel the nights are gonna stay very cold on a more extended basis. Well, I have no space indoors for the stand. So they are on my Blooming Alley south facing shelf. And there is a curtain that you can see there. That is normally down at night. Just maybe just to help a little bit from any kind of chill. It doesn't do much, but it just calms my conscience. So the stands come into this little shelf here, be more, a little bit more protected as opposed to being exposed out on the patio. My Murasaki Komachi is here and so is my Zygopetalum No ID. And they are handling it all very, very well. And because of size, my Colmenara Masai Red, who is in gorgeous spike, there are six spikes coming, also has to stay outside. Not ideal, but that's the way it has been for years now. And then here is the No ID Maxillaria that I have, and I've never gotten it to bloom. It stays outside. And then, of course, my little Rapiculus Lalias. Slow pan. They're outside as well. My air plants stay outside, and you can see all the mounts of my dendrobiums, and up there is my Cernua. Victoria Regina, the Anosmum, Unicum, Unicum, Aphilum Cakeys, and Exile, or Exile. So they are all up against their wall where they live actually permanently. The sun angle does everything else for me. And the left side over here, you can already see that it's coming into shade. 10 minutes ago, they were in full sun. It's the Victoria Regina and still the polyanthem is in full sun but will end up being in shade. But super bright light and Tortile is back in its permanent place after repotting. It now lives outside permanently and it has all the signs of nubbins everywhere. Nubbins. Woohoo! Also some little stragglers up here because of shelf space. This is Lelia Flava and my Neostylus Luceneri Blue, the cutting in the pot, which is in spike with one bud. And down here is my Vandercostylus Cerula, something like that, I'll have to double check. And the reason I have to double check is because I've pretty much ignored it as it's not doing really well for me. So it is in permanent water culture and it's pushing out new roots and extensions of those roots. Also on the other side, you can see how it's, and I'm surprised it's putting up with a cold like this because it's a hot grower. But the minute I take it out of that bucket and don't have it on water, all those leaves that really look already closed, they will actually close up even further. So it's just permanently in water. And that is my blooming alley. Now, for the coming weeks, how it's set up and who has to live here and brace the cold until such a time that they can go into their other areas. And I have this space in order to bring out some of the orchids for them to enjoy the natural light. Because now that the sun is out, it is nice and toasty in this little corner. It's just like, you know, seven hours during the night when the temperatures drop that I'm like just holding on, holding on, asking them to just grin and bear it. It'll be fine eventually, I hope. And here I am on my west side of the patio. Those buckets up there, nice color for this time of year because they are warming up that water fast. The sun comes out really quickly 
and hits the top angle of that rack. So that's where my buckets are for the first thing in the morning to get warmed up. I also have my chow praya here, my papillonanthe totem pole. They have to grin and bear it, but as you can see, the sun is coming really fast. It is now 10.30. Soon they'll be in sun, warming up nicely up against that organic hedge there. It doesn't get as cold as it would be up against a wall. And then I have Kimi, Holcoglossum Kimberlianum here as well. This is the coldest I have ever had it outside. And I'm not actually freaking out about it. But you see, straight away in the morning, it gets direct sun very, very quickly. The reason say I'm not freaking out about it is because Last year and the years I've had it before, I've always been babying it and thought, no, anything under 10 degrees. I brought it inside. I was, you know, chickening out. But it's never gotten blooms. So I'm thinking as to what artwork and beekeeping said, leave it outside to get a good chill in order to induce blooms. So we shall see. So far, so good. It's still with us. These little crunchy bits up here are from a locust. That's locust damage. But we'll see, right now it's enjoying a little bit of sun and when that water is warm enough, I shall spray it down. On the east side, this table normally also has Maxillaria variabilis on it, but he is currently on the staging in the back there. But these three orchids here are the Nobili, no ID, Falcata, and here's Barioda. And this is where they live because they don't mind the chill factor out and exposed. And then eventually they will get full sun until the sun sets by the arch over there. Eventually they will get full sun. They don't get full morning sun straight away, but it's coming and they can handle that chill factor. It's not gonna be as much of a show as it was last year because of the growth habit there's more going on in the perimeter as opposed to the middle, but that's fine. Got nubbins coming here on the nobili. And slow pan. Fire stunk Not ideal conditions, as cold as it's gotten. I have no choice. It has to be here because of the size of it. No complaints about the size of it. Just wish I could do it more justice. Overstepped my competency there with this one, but it seems to be holding on okay. Got a little bit of leaf die back over here, but not as bad as it used to be. Gorgeous spikes coming along. One there, and one over there. Wonderful. And my cymbidium, of course, old faithful here isn't the prettiest looking plant because I don't have the humidity for it in the summer. It's pretty nasty on the tips. However, it's forgiving. I've got four spikes coming on that as well and the buds are now showing, which is fantastic. I love this one and call it beach ball just because of how the buds look when they are forming. So despite it not getting its much needed babying, I still get it to bloom. So let's go inside and see <laughs> what's going on there. Whoops, hang on before we go inside. Here's my aphyllum. It will be in full sun very shortly. Looking rather naked and sad and sorry for itself. That's normal. But this one lives outside and this is its permanent location. The angle of the sun does the work for me. And then there's the Sorola over here doing really well, coming up with a new growth. And this is the Ceratolabium. Two beautiful canes in last year's season. And the third one is really, really gunning its way into a substantial, gorgeous growth. So that lives here. My back is towards the east. We're facing west. It's going to get some sun very, very soon. So the global lights are off and you can see that I brought now most of the mounts in that can't tolerate the cold. Isn't that pretty, the popcorn Haruri? Over there still in boom. Incredible. 
and still pink. They haven't faded yet. So the mounts hang here towards the light. And let's walk a little bit slowly. Now you can see the van der Rack in full swing, <laughs> pun intended, because they had to come inside. Up until now, I was very, very courageous and left them outside at temperatures to 12, 11. That yellowing you see on the leaves over there of the, um, what I call leopard yawn, that was cold damage because I forgot it in the band of tub overnight. So I did that, but everybody else has come inside. No more risking, no more worrying. Yeah, it's all a little bit crowded on mornings after cold nights. This is what I'm waiting for to change. These two temperatures, they have to match. You can see that because of where the sensor is, it's a little bit warmer where the sensor is outdoors than it is indoors. But that is because of the sun. It has nothing to do with the fact that I could switch them already. The wind chill is much, much colder than 17 degrees. So I shall not be fooled, I shall wait. The temperatures for me have to match before I move anybody outside, especially let's say the Tolumnias. Most of them are in spike and in bud. I've had a bit of bud blast because I keep shifting them outside, but I try to minimize that by matching indoor and outdoor and not just looking at the outdoor and how warm it is because I know where that sensor is. That is not the right temperature based on the wind or the air factor outside. A quick look-see based on the first really chilly night week coming up and who is where now because this is pretty much how it's going to be for the coming weeks. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you're doing well. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video, I hope. Take care. Bye.